Hi there, welcome to my channel. I have something really cool to show everybody today. So Sugarberry Smash and I went to Target this morning in search of some amiibo cards because I checked online and it stated that my nearby Target had some limited stock available and we gave it a try. Unfortunately, we struck out terribly, but fortunately we were walking through the Nintendo aisle and this controller caught my eye because I've never seen it before anywhere. So my channel has shown off countless Power A Animal Crossing controllers over the past year. So this was a first to see a rock candy brand controller that's officially licensed by Nintendo and it has Timmy and Tommy Nook on the controller and it comes in their infamous rock candy transparent shell. And in this case, it's a green shell with light beige colored for the buttons and analog sticks and all of those cool things. So after I brought this home, I did some research and it seems that this is only available at Target and it's only $19.99. So for my fellow Animal Crossing super fans out there, I'll leave a link in the video's description and y'all can check that out at Target. With that, as we look around the box, there's nothing too fancy about the controller itself besides the design. There aren't any extra bells or whistles such as back buttons or a turbo. It's purely aesthetic. It's wired and it comes with a detachable 8 foot cable. To be really blunt or honest, this is basically for those who need a second controller for couch co-op, someone who doesn't want to cough up 60 to $70 for an official Nintendo Switch Pro controller, and more than likely, like myself, Animal Crossing super fans who want to add to their Animal Crossing merch collection. So as I speed this portion up, it's pretty funny because I guess Rock Candy or PDP, who's the mother company for this product, knows that this controller is really basic. So on the back of the box, they mentioned that it's reliable and ergonomic. And besides the detachable cable, that's pretty much all they highlight for their main features. So for those wondering, this is compatible with the Switch Lite, but they didn't include a USB-C to USB-A adapter. So you'll need to pick one of those up if you want to use this on a Switch Lite. Anyway, I'm excited to get the actual controller out and show it to everybody. But first, we have the documentation that we just saw, and then a really lengthy 8-foot cable that follows the controller's color scheme. So that's really nice looking. Unfortunately, it's a micro USB cable, but for $20, you get what you pay for. So here's the actual controller itself. And as I have it in my hand right now, it is absolutely tiny. So this is probably more perfect for those who have smaller hands or if you have child hands. <laughs> so if a child wants to use this, I think it'll be better off for a smaller gamer. So the dimensions for the controller is it's 5.51 inches tall by 6.1 inches wide, and it's 2.56 inches thick. And also it's really light, less than half a pound at 0.44 pounds. So not even half a pound. So typical with PDP and Power A controllers, these controllers are really clicky when it comes to all of the buttons. It feels cheap in the hands, you know, it's a plastic controller. So what do you expect? It's only $20 as well too. I've mentioned that multiple times. So you do get what you pay for. As you can see, compared to a Nintendo Switch Pro controller, the official one, it is much smaller. Um, it's probably just as thick, maybe a little bit thicker but height-wise and length-wise, it is way smaller. The buttons are closer to each other. And in comparison, here is a Power A wired controller with Isabel on it. And you can see that it is much smaller. And the Power A controller is much closer in style to the actual Nintendo Switch Pro controller. While this one kind of reminds me of an Xbox 360 controller that's just a little bit smaller. So if that makes sense, that's what it actually feels like in the hand. But so far, I think it's a viable and a usable secondary controller if you're going to use it for a friend or if you want to give it to your younger sibling to use but for me i'm going to use this as a collector and keep it as a collector so i'll go back in the box and i'll probably just have it displayed somewhere with all my other animal crossing items so let's get the nintendo switch set up and we'll get everything plugged in and we'll try it out and see how functional and see how responsive everything is so the cord itself is pretty lengthy so i'm not gonna unravel it since my switch is right here right next to the controller as mentioned earlier this is eight feet long so it's right in that middle ground where some of these wired controllers I've had some where they have six foot cables and some with 10 foot cables so for 20 bucks, eight foot cable, cool design. And so far it's everything that I've expected it to be. Unfortunately, when I plugged it in, there aren't cool lights everywhere like other rock candy controllers. So it just has a little LED indicator showing off that it works. And here it is just showing off in the change grip order menu that it is identified as a USB controller. Right from the bat, the first thing that I have to get used to is the plus and minus buttons are located underneath the capture button and the home button. Usually on controllers, it's the other way around. 
around. So that's something to get used to along with the size of the controller. But so far, everything's working. D-pad's working. The left analog stick is going. There's not much of a dead zone. It's pretty responsive. Everything's functional so far. Tried Y, tried B, B's to run. Left analog stick's still doing good. Got my backpack up with X pressing B to cancel. So everything so far is working well. Took a picture right there. Home button's working. Plus doesn't do much. Minus is actually how you exit the game. So trying out the buttons on top. There is a chat button, the right shoulder with the right trigger right there for reactions. Left trigger is your Nook Miles phone or actually your Nook phone. And the left shoulder doesn't do much in the game at all, but everything seems to be working just fine. Uh, for $20, as mentioned, I say the price over and over again because I haven't seen a controller look this cool. And you know, besides the size being a bit smaller, everything is functional. There aren't extra bells and whistles. There aren't back buttons that you can program or a turbo button or anything. Pretty straightforward. If you're a collector of Animal Crossing controllers, this is definitely one that you should add to your collection because look how awesome it looks. I don't have a transparent controller, so this is my first one. And I'm glad that I can put this on my shelf somewhere and maybe if I ever play Smash and need an extra controller, one of my other controllers break. This is definitely a good backup. It's a usable backup, so maybe for somebody with smaller hands. So if you want to add it to your collection, I left the link down below for those who are interested and want to see it in person. And if you just like Animal Crossing merch, there's the Animal Crossing manga right there. It's a great thing to add to your little shelf of Animal Crossing items. Overall, I do give it my thumbs up. You get what you pay for. It's $20 made out of plastic, but it does have a really cool design. With that, hopefully y'all enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to check out these others. If you liked hanging out with me today, please consider subscribing to be the first to know when I upload something new or even go live on a stream. And for those who want to support the channel just a bit more, click that join button down below to learn more about my channel memberships and maybe you'll see your name at the beginning or end of my next video. I'll see you all soon. Please stay safe out there. Goodbye.